All right, how's everybody doing out there in Math Magic Land? It's Ms. Muscarella coming at you, and in this video, we're going to take a look at naming the quadrant that an angle lies in. Very often in a lot of math textbooks, you'll see this picture. And what this picture wants you to do is know where each of the trig functions are positive. Of course, everything will be positive in quadrant number one, sine is positive in quadrant number two, tangent is positive in quadrant three, and cosine is positive in quadrant number four. Now, how do you memorize this? Well, that's something else you'll see a lot of math teachers talk about. And they'll use this kind of mnemonic. All students take calculus. Seems to be a real popular one. And the A for, for all stands for all, so that's quadrant one. The S in students stands for sine in quadrant two. And the T for take stands for tangent, which is in quadrant three. And C for calculus represents the C in cosine. So this is one way to remember and to memorize this. Don't forget, these are only three of the six trig functions. So they're reciprocal functions of sine, cos, and tan. They would be positive in the same spots as their reciprocals, which means in quadrant two, cosecant is also going to be positive. In quadrant number three, cotangent is going to be positive. And of course, secant will be positive in quadrant four because it's the reciprocal of the cosine function. So here's a typical problem that you'll see in a math textbook or given to you by your math teacher. Name the quadrant which the angle theta lies. So more or less, it's a game of where am I? Where's theta? So here we are, we've got two conditions here and what we're gonna do is play around and see which quadrant meets both of those conditions. Sine theta is less than zero, cosine theta is greater than zero. So here's the first thing that you're going to do. Draw this chart. Like it, most people, when you get really good at this, you won't have to put all this information in it. But in the beginning, you might. Because you need to remember all the information that's contained in there. Now, I like to call this the X and O game. So what I do for each one of the trig functions that I'm given, my two conditions, sine, I'm going to make that an X. And then cosine, I'm going to make that an O. And for the two conditions that I'm given, I'm just going to put an X or an O anywhere that condition is true. So let's take a look at our first condition, sine of X less than zero. So that means I want sine to be negative. Well, sine is negative here in quadrant three and quadrant number four. So two X's go in those two quadrants. Next, I look at condition number two where cosine is greater than zero, which means cosine is going to be positive. And of course, everything is positive in quadrant one. And then cosine is also positive here in quadrant four. So the quadrant that meets both of these conditions is quadrant number four. Name the quadrant which the angle theta lies. So again, I'm gonna go X's and O's, tangent's gonna be X, and then secant is going to be my O. So tangent theta, I want tangent theta to be greater than zero, which is positive. So that's gonna be in quadrant one and over here in quadrant three. Secant, I want secant to also be positive, so that's gonna be in quadrant one and down here in quadrant number four. Well, the winning quadrant that has an X and an O in it for these two conditions is quadrant number one. This is getting pretty easy, isn't it? I think you guys got this by now, but wait, there's one more example with some other numbers. Check this out. Ooh, gross. Name the quadrant which the angle theta lies. Sine theta is root 21 over 7. Cosine theta is negative 2 root 7 over 7. Oh, gosh. Don't freak out. Again, just go to X's and O's. So you got X's for sine. You got O's for cosine. And what you're going to do is just put an X and an O in each one of the quadrants where those conditions are each true. So go ahead and try this one on your own. Hit pause. Come on back and see if you filled this one out correctly. So how'd you do? Did you get the X's and the O's in the right spot? We're able to determine that quadrant two was the correct quadrant that makes each one of these two conditions true. If you were, good for you, you're a rock star. If you messed up, you probably just made a careless mistake. All right, so that's it for this video. By now, at the end of this, you know how to name the quadrant that any angle you're given lies in. Pretty easy peasy, right? So cool. Thanks, and I'll catch up with you later. Peace out. 